The Elegoo Mars 5 line of resin 3D printers are the smallest of Elegoo's resin machine offerings, but they're packed full of awesome new features. Today we're going to take an in-depth first look at the Mars 5 Ultra specifically. Let's go over some of the main features here. It has a 9K screen with a resolution of 8520 by 4320 which gives us a pixel size of 18 micron for some awesome detail. It has a build volume of 153.36 mm on the X, 77.76 mm on the Y, and 165 mm on the Z, which means we can pack quite a few minis onto this build plate. There's a handful of smart features here as well, including auto bed leveling, low resin alarm, leveling failure alarm, and debris detection. There's also warp detection and empty build plate detection thanks to this little camera behind the print bed. This camera can also be used to monitor your prints and take some time-lapse footage as well. The build plate is laser engraved for better print adhesion and the build plate assembly has a single lever release system for ease of removal. They've also included this snap-on plastic resin shield so when removing your prints you don't accidentally drip any resin on your machine. There's a few safety features here as well. There's overheat protection so that if the LED temperature exceeds 80 degrees Celsius, it'll trigger an alarm and pause the print. There's also power loss resume too. The star of the show here is the tilting resin vat. This drastically increases both speed and success rate. It ships with a license for Chi2Box Pro, so let's load that up and start slicing some models. One thing that I wanted to test out was the variable exposure length mode that helps you find the perfect printing parameters for any given resin. It does this by splitting the screen into 4-8 to eight sections and gives you the option to add or subtract layer exposure time to each section. Let's load up 8 of these Elegoo Rook test models and see how this works. Once the print file is loaded into this menu, it'll auto-assign different exposure times for each section of the LCD. Then simply hit play and the test print will start. This machine comes with a standard lift-off UV shield, but I'm going to leave it off and use this Elegoo 3D printer enclosure. I have this vented out the window using a small PC fan, and it works really well. Not even a hint of resin smell in my workshop here, even with the front door flap open for my camera. Highly recommended, I think they're around 40 bucks. Elegoo also sent me this wash and cure station, and if you've seen any of my other resin videos, this was much needed. I filled up the wash bucket with isopropyl and sent these little rook models for a 4 minute spin. I opted to wash them still on the build plate so I could remember the order and write the exposure times on each of them without washing it off. I always forget how difficult resin prints are to remove from the build plate, especially ones with no chamfer on the bottom side. I definitely should have opted for supports with skates on these. After that, it was into the curing chamber. This curing station has a small handheld UV wand for curing any places that you think might have been missed. One thing I didn't realize is that the resin would yellow so much from the curing process. But the models are fully cured, and check out this mirror-like finish on the top surface. Super cool. As for the test, I didn't see much of a difference in print quality, and I think I should have opted for a test with more small details. This video is brought to you in part by Elegoo. Right now, Elegoo is celebrating the release of the Saturn IV and Mars V resin printers by holding the Resin Rookie giveaway. Resin printing has a bit of a steep learning curve, so shedding some light on some common printing issues like this is an awesome way to help out a new resin user. Simply head to the link in the description and answer the resin printing related question for a chance to win a handful of awesome Elegoo prizes. Also included on the USB stick was a full set of chess models, so I grabbed the King Demon and loaded him into Chi2Box. After applying supports to the model, I sent him over to the printer.
And here's the result. Flawless print, and I think the clear resin is super cool. I removed the supports and sent them into the curing chamber for half the time of the rooks to see if that would help with the yellowing. And while he's not nearly as yellow as the rook models, he's still got a bit of a tinge to him. I think this is pretty common though, as most of the translucent resins I've seen have some sort of pigment that would disguise this. Next, I threw in some Wild Rose Builds keychains. And these came out great. Crazy to see the kind of detail these machines are able to produce. I designed this lattice torture test, mainly to get a really cool time lapse, but with the segments of this model measuring in at 0.4 millimeters, I was blown away that it printed successfully. The model was almost flexible prior to curing, which was super cool. Finally, it's time for some minis. I know a lot of people use resin printers for this, so I found a handful of cool minis to print on printables. And here's how they turned out. This little imp demon reminded me of one of my favorite Hearthstone characters, and it printed great even without a base. This grazer from Horizon required a fair amount of support, but the detail on these thin parts is awesome. This one would be a lot of fun to paint. This skeleton axe wielder came pre-supported and the detail on this one is awesome, even with his thin bony appendages. This Halo Arbiter came out great with even the little crystals on his needler remaining intact. And finally, this Hooded Stranger Mini. This one's actually for FDM printing and required no support, so the surface finish here is perfect. I hope this video gave you some insight into whether or not the Mars 5 Ultra would fit into your workshop. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer them. As always, thanks for watching and happy printing.